so I want to thank everyone who's made this possible for me over this. This is probably the 30th draft of this presentation. I've been making presentations uh, at ISS and Mars Society uh, since 1986. I'd like to thank Victor Schneider, the Chief uh, Flight Surgeon at NASA, for encouraging me early on. Cosmonaut General Vladimir John Abekov, who, uh, who I met at Georgia Tech in 1987 who took my uh, proposal to Institute of uh, Biomedical Problems in NASA. Uh, uh, Anastasia Stepanova uh, with the serious missions encouraged me last year to follow with this and, and many friends too numerous to mention. I dedicate my presentations to my son, Kevin William Gardner, who died in 1980. I'm sorry, he was born in 1989 and died September 30th, 2014. Why are we so sick, Earthlings? Why are we sick? Let's explore some new frontiers in gastronomy, to make a little pun here, because metabolic syndrome is the precondition in individuals that makes the COVID-19 deadly. The high frequency of metabolic syndrome makes it a pandemic on Earth. Metabolic syndrome also makes individuals susceptible to the health problems of spaceflight, including a, a spaceflight-associated neuroocular syndrome, motor muscle loss, and radiation-induced cancer. A principal marker of metabolic syndrome is insulin resistance, and it often precedes any disease symptoms. You can ask your doctor for a test for HOMA IR, ask for that. Principal causes uh, of uh, insulin resistance are sucrose, frust, fructose, that's from Dr. Lustig, and seed oils in a common diet. These are significant constituents of processed foods. And we at NSS are now cooperating with MMR, so Susan Jules organization, with recruiting and preparing individuals to participate in Mars analog training missions. To prepare for going to Mars now, get your diagnostics done, change your diet, find one that's comfortable for you and correct these conditions. Uh, you may have all seen this before, space radiation exposure from cancer is uh, NASA's number one risk for space flight, and there's a variety of them here. Uh, last year at the NSS, we had Dr. Chris Parada present his uh, research on how he used uh, how he used curcumin to help mice recover from radiation exposure at the uh, NASA Space Radiation Laboratory at uh, Brookhaven. Uh, and but now we know that there's some other problems with curcumin. So what does work for us? Well, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the processed foods that are responsible for nutrient deficiency. Uh, processed food as a percent of the U.S. diet is uh, quite a large percent. Only real whole foods, maybe 29 percent these days. Uh, carbs have gone up over the years. Fat, protein, and saturated fats have gone down. Causes of death have changed dramatically from 1900 to 2010, mostly infectious diseases from bad water and uh, contamination uh, in the water supplies. But that's changed now. Cancer, heart disease, these are all metabolic disorders. Uh, there's been a 62-fold increase in the timeline for cancer deaths, a 25-fold increase in diet, type 2 diabetes. Uh, obesity has gone up to 39.8% from 1%. But yet, at the beginning of the 20th century, Dr. E.D. McComb made a study of the new oils that were being introduced, introduced into the diet at that time. Uh, he he uh, put uh, laboratory rats on two different diets, one of 5% cottonseed oil, which was, had never been used before. It was a, it was a waste product of the uh, um, cotton uh, processing. They had all these 100, 160 tons of cotton seeds for maybe 100 tons of cotton processed. So there was a, a financial incentive to make that work as a food supply versus the 1.5% butterfat, and you can see the difference between the two rats. I mean, the one, the one on the left died half the time as the one on the right. Survival, 555 days, healthy, 1,020 days on butterfat. So yay, let's get back to the saturated fats, shall we? Diet must contain these things. Uh, so both the growth promoting fat and the trace of unidentified substance in the extract are necessary for motion of growth or the preservation of health. That's in the butterfly. These nutrients aren't present in the uh, seed oils we have in our diet. And these are all the sources of seed oil. Uh, you've seen them all on your shelf at the, at the grocery store and that's the same thing they use in the restaurant still. Uh, total vegetable oil consumption has gone up this much in years. And the comp uh, comparison of dietary fats, coconut oil has saturated fat the most, whereas all these 
linoleic acids in blue are ex uh, exclusively omega-6s, mostly from seed oils. So there's been a 12-fold increase in omega-6s from 1865 to 2008. Here's the chart. Notice how vegetable oils go up with heart disease deaths. Saturated fats had no influence. This is a big mistake made in the 1970s and 80s by researchers who claimed that it was saturated fats that was causing our problem. Sorry about that. Diet of milk, but on the other hand, you look at the Maasai tribe and other tribes, that they have a diet of milk, meat, and blood. 3,000 kilocalories a day, 66% animal fat, no heart disease, all right? Uh, islanders in the Pacific, coconut, fish, starchy tubers, 48% saturated fat, 53% fat tubers, starchy tubers. 2% 2 of diet is PUFAs, that is these oils, uh, the uh, polyunsaturated oils. And they're perfectly healthy, 0% of men age with, pre, uh, with previous, virtually no obesity or diabetes. And for those who are concerned about their carb diet, here in uh, Papua New Guinea, this, their diet is 94.6% carbs, uh, only 0.6% omega-6, no heart disease, no obesity. So it's, it's not the carbs, that is the natural carbs, but it's the processed carbs and the uh, linoleic oil. Population was lean, absence of obesity, no diabetes. Ischemic heart disease was rare if not absent. By the way, all the, these slides right here are reproduced from Dr. Christopher Nabi. He's, uh, he's a specialist, in, uh, ophthalmologist specialist in age-related molecular de degeneration. So how do these happy population, healthy populations not have? No vegetable oils, no refined sugar, no refined wheat, no processed foods. Healthy traditional populations, what about the macronutrient ratios? Carb percent matter? Doesn't matter. Fat percent matter? Doesn't matter. Okay, soybean oil diet, which is your omega-6 source, induces marked insulin resistance, worse than high fructose soybean oil diet. And uh, vegetable oil and cancer, 31 cancer-associated genes dysregulated, five cancer-promoting genes upregulated, six cancer-inhibiting genes suppressed. So what do we got here? Uh, with apologies to Coke Industries, we have a vegetable oil refinery on the left and we have a divinely healthy pasture on the right, grass-fed cattle, okay? Proposed contribution of uh, current processed food to obesity is, I think we've looked at this before, vegetable oils and trans fats, 80%. That's Dr. Nami. So how can we consume only 1% omega-6? No seed oils, get your butter fats, okay? This is a radiation effect from astrocytes of uh, uh, of, 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 of uh, the radiation like we have in space. It's also what, the same thing that happens with these oils. Uh, the root cause of cancer was awarded to, uh, no, uh, to Heinrich Warburg in 1931. Unfortunately, he stayed on the wrong side during the war, so we had a little knowledge of this on the Western side. We've heard of a ketogenic diet. It may work best in the early stages of some cancers. It may be helpful in combination with anti-cancer therapy. Uh, not effective as a sole approach to establish cancer and research is ongoing. Fasting, time, uh, methionine restriction, caloric restriction, again, these uh, work well in the early stages of cancer, the, the responsible for recovery from any damage that may occur from the uh, radiation in space. Fasting reverses lymphoblastic le leukemia and fasting recovers normal tissue. So even if we're, when we're exposed to radiation in space, if we release our natural healing capabilities, we shouldn't, we shouldn't exceed more than a 1% cancer rate on the, on the way to Mars. In fact, there's no reason why we should get sick from the, from the radiation there because it's, uh, it's not the same as all the things we already have. We can't take our ill health into space and therefore we'll be healthier going to Mars. Fasting and cancer patients on chemo at USC did all these things. pH adjustments, alkalinization helped with all these things too, decreases the size of lung metastases. Pure baking soda, 88 cents a box, it works. If you're in one of these bad states, not so important if you're not, not in it. This is kind of a, this is a, a, a hack of a sort. I, I've been using it, but lately I've been able to cut back on it since I've been doing an all meat diet with saturated fat. And you can check that in the morning with your, with your pH strips. Uh, there are other things going on here like candida. It's, it's an endosymbiont that gets into us and, and does all these things that uh, adversely affect the immune system, kidneys, livers. And how does it get there? Leaky gut syndrome. How do we get leaky gut syndrome? We overfeed our candida. They require sugar. We can live on fats. We don't need sugars. 
the candida do? You cut down your sugars, you get that your leaky gut syndrome, and uh, you you know you get healthy. And once that's done, you get uh, your tight junctions restored. You don't get candida. You don't have all these little uh, opportunistic uh, parasites doing their own thing inside of us, basically farming us. Now we don't want to be farmed on the way to Mars. We want to farm when we get to Mars, right? Like you know, like uh, fecal matter uh, potatoes. Uh, you can get a live blood cell test. I do this. I, uh, I discovered this with Kevin back in the 2008 that we could figure out our our um, our state of health by looking at a little sample of blood every now and then. So, will you get ready to go to Mars with us? Kevin said in his final note, "It's the journey, not the destination." So, what are we doing about this? Um, we have uh, NSS has a health and spaceflight contest. This is uh, a poster for last year's contest. We did award. Uh, $3,500 $3, cash prize to the, uh, uh, when we lost it here, to the, uh, to the winner. And I guess I lost the rest of my slides. $3,500 to the winner and uh, 1,000 to the runner up. And this year we're running a contest to, uh, to prepare people for our analog Mars missions by getting them to take a, uh, 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 a pre-flight or pre-mission diet that will eliminate these markers of insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome, and therefore stand to, uh, to have an improved response on the Mars analog missions. So that, that is all it, that is the universe in a nutshell to quote a title from, uh, from Stephen Hawking. Uh, are there any questions? Feel free to type them in or unmute yourself if you want to ask a question. So Holger Eisenberg says, do you agree that it would make sense then to send a robotic enclosed greenhouse then to Mars a year before the first crew arrives there? Yes, but you gotta be careful about the selection. There was a, a RFI for what you put in the greenhouse is what I mean. There was an RFI request for information from NASA in September asking uh, for our, our general public uh, input to the question can we develop food technologies or what kind of food technologies? Well, that, that presupposes what food will take to Mars. So, you know, people talk about the Mediterranean diets, ketogenic diets, uh, even a traditional ISS diet made of, uh, uh, you know, preserved foods. But let's not jump the gun. Let's see what, let's see what, work, what uh, works first. Can we not take frozen meat aboard the space station if we had a deep freezer or a locker? I ask you back. Maybe that's what we need. Maybe we need to take animal products and animal food with us. If that's what's going to work and keep us from getting cancer, we're going to eliminate a lot of shielding, aren't we? Now, we'll never have to eliminate, uh, we never can eliminate a storm cellar like we have CMEs. But that's my answer. Figure out the food first, then figure out the greenhouse. Right. All right. Uh, do we have more questions? Feel free to ask now in the chat or yeah i guess i've solved everybody's health problems it's wonderful to see the, the attendees well, that was a great that was a great talk if um no one else will ask a question i have a question um of my own what do you think of uh 3d printers for food uh for food purposes in terms of the um, kind of versatility and flexibility well, of I, I think it's it's going to be a, a very serviceable thing Thing to take along. I think we'll be able to uh, print our food from 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 the basics. Um, we're learning more about how things are produced uh, from from a fundamental components issue. In fact, I've got another talk on Saturday with Holger Eisenberg about uh, plasma processes at Mars that may help us uh, produce useful minerals, water, and other things at Mars by understanding plasma interactions between the environment of Mars and the surface. And basically, we're talking about Food replicators being the ultimate end of, of uh, you know, of uh, 3D printing capabilities. All right, yeah, that makes sense. Um, maybe let's just uh, wait for another minute or two, see if anyone else wants to ask a question. I'm surprised we got done in 20 minutes after the long delayed start. We probably lost a lot of people to start. I'm sorry. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but um, uh, you know the uh, uh, so the very, very there's so many variations and diet possibilities between <clears throat> between vegan foods and 
in carnivore foods and 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 so uh, we're shaking this all out. If you'd asked me two years ago, from based on the research, what works the best, and I would have said ketogenic diet, and, and I tried it myself, and uh, I finally got into my my proper BMI range for the first time, uh, and since I was probably 16 years or 18 years old. Uh, but then when we ran the contest, we found that um, uh, the uh, the winners of the contest uh, did not want to go keto. We encouraged them to do keto, uh, but uh, one the the, the the first prize winner said she had a problem in getting on keto over 30 days, and, and the second prize winner also said he had issues with the research. Well, I think we've answered those questions now. The, the, the problem is that we damage our mitochondria cells and their capacity to use other things than carbs, because carbs is the most primitive glycolytic pathway. We have the uh, Krebs citric acid cycle to process uh, fats. And if you have insulin resistance, you, you, you're probably brought. If you've been, you can be obese and, and not be diabetic. You can be obese and not know you're insulin resistant. You have to get test run. All, many people uh, end up being diabetic because Ultimately, uh, they can't, the machinery is so badly damaged, the metabolic machinery is so badly damaged, and the pancreas is working so hard to, to get a response from the fatty tissues to, to store the excess sugar in the diet. But if it can't get that, if it can't get the metabolic machinery to work, then the, then, the, then the blood sugar will build up ultimately, and you'll be diagnosed with diabetes. So it's a key thing that's been promoted by Dr. Jason Fung in Toronto, and numerous other uh, medical people you can see on uh, <clears throat> medical medical people you can see on uh, uh, on on YouTube. And there's um, you know there's a uh, uh, just a lot of advice about that. The direction seems to be heading now, at least as an elimination diet, to the so-called carnivore diet, which is uh, as the name suggests, mostly meat. Uh, you look at Ted, Na Ted Neiman's work, that's N-E-I-M-A-N. Uh, he, uh, he advocates the uh, carnivore diet. And uh, uh, so, uh, on that note, Chris Git Gidlow is asking, I cannot understand how a dairy diet on Mars could be self-sufficient. It sounds like continuous transport of, uh, say, powdered milk from Earth and frozen beef. We surely need Mars colonies to be self-sufficient. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a good question. Now, uh, pound for pound, goats are the best dairy milk producer. And they're not dairy milk, they're goat milk. Uh, they very, have a very high uh, ratio of, uh, of milk to um, biomass. So, and that was one of the early suggestions by Keith Henson with the L5 Society. He said goats may, would make a great companions to go, uh, to go on, on our first trip to Mars. And if we're right about this, then we're gonna, we're gonna eliminate tons and tons and tons of shielding. Now I wouldn't send everybody else, people out to Mars without shielding, but I wanna get the experiments done on Earth first. I wanna go to these Mars analog missions. Maybe there's some surrogate we can use for uh, you know, background co uh, cosmic uh, radiation or galactic cosmic radiation, GCRs, that where we can test this test this theory, this hypothesis, this common sense approach to food that we've overlooked. This is a problem of not of science, of nutrition science, but of attention to what, you know, to what the, uh, the actual science is going on. So we have a problem with, um, you know, with, with big industry, big institutions. Ansel Keys was, was financed by the, by the sugar industry and he cherry picked his data back in the sixties uh, and seventies. And, uh, I, I'm sure he did it, didn't do it maliciously, but he had confirmation bias, and he's the one who convinced uh, the Congress to put in the USDA food pyramid uh, the idea that carbohydrates should be your number one uh, item of consumption and fats uh, minimized. He didn't even look at carbohydrates in those diets that he he quoted, and when you add back the the ones that he uh, the ones that he didn't look at, there was no relationship between carb carbohydrate intake and, and obesity. Uh, he omitted countries like France and Sweden who have high fat content in their diets, but they don't have cardio, cardiovascular disease. Uh, there were people who objected to it at the time, but they just got swamped by the prestige of Harvard and the, 
you know, the, uh, the brute force of, of institutions that uh, were eager to tell people what to eat. But now I'm, I'm happy to say in recent years, the Institute of Medicine has looked at these issues and is now recommend, I don't have a new food pyramid here, but if you look at the food pyramid, now it does recommend as in, in minimizing uh, processed food and, and carbs. And so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna see this show up, but unfortunately, carbohydrates are regulated as such. It is a federal requirement for people who are fed on, on food programs. And I dare I say NASA, I'd say NASA follows the same rules. They've got to have 55% carbs by law, by regulation. And so what opportunity does that give us to really try these things? They're going to have to get exceptions. And that's why we're here at Space Life, because we're going to get those exceptions and we're going to test these new diets. And we're going to tell the rest of the public how we did it. And we're going to... So that, that, that's very interesting. On, on that note, there's two more questions related questions. One is um, if insects provide any or sufficient fat content. And, and the other uh, question is um, that apparently, you know, algae produce milk proteins that will be much more efficient solution than, than bringing animals. Um, what do you think about that? Well, I think it's, I think it's a great idea. I, I think nothing can be ruled out. I mean, I, 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 there are traditional cultures that, that do um, catch the locusts and the grasshoppers and grind them up and they make foodstuffs out of them. Uh, it's not the yuck factor, of course. You know, we eat things like lobsters and crabs and things that look yucky, but they, they taste sweet. So yeah, let's go for it. Do, do you think that's more efficient than bringing um, Oats? animals? Well, we'll have to see. Um, it just depends upon the outcome of trials with it. Um, certainly, it, it, we, we, we need to try anything that looks reasonable. I mean, this ought to be a major area of research. It ought to be funded out the wazoo by people like the food industries because they know all these problems better than we do. They know these issues. The, the head, of, uh, the head of, uh, of, uh, of Post Foods was fired a few years ago because he recommended this. He recommended they reduce sugar in their, in their cereals, and they got a small reduction, but they fired him because he was, he was pursuing that. So there's, there's a tremendous resistance to it. And I, and I don't think it's deliberate. It's just that you have confirmation bias. And the, and the thing that goes with confirmation bias is that's how I make my living. You know, that's how the executives, all the people who work in those jobs, uh, that's how they make their living. And so you have a natural bias against trying these things. Uh, but if you're going to get healthy, it's, the shit has hit the fan now, friends. Uh, this COVID-19 is a direct product of these practices and institutional requirements. It's a direct product, make no mistake about it. Um, and I know, uh, I, I know that uh, the, the people who, everybody who's familiar with nutrition knows this now, the question is how to get it out to the public. And this is certainly one, uh, one channel that we're gonna use to get it out to the public. We can say that astronauts get healthy going on this diet. Well, you know, I mean, those are the stars of the galaxy right now. <laughs> If we can get other people to eat that way and get healthy by proof, not by speculation, then you know we may we really contribute something major to the to the general public through our efforts here at Mars Society, NSS, and the other space agency organizations. So, sure, okay. Well, Comment. thanks for. Oh, yeah. Someone. Um, wanna... Yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, uh, this is Doug from Redlands, California. Wanted to jump in on that uh, insect uh, as food. Um, you know, you, if you take a look at the math, yes, uh, insects are a great way to produce protein, you know, convert waste, uh, you know, plant waste and, and produce more protein. What I would say is we need to take a look at the big picture, and that is when it comes to private settlement, the people who uh, are, we, we want to convince people to take their savings and sell their homes and and use that money to buy a, a, star, a starship ticket and support themselves uh, uh, while on, on the surface of Mars. So basically it's older people. I mean, these are sort of retirees. We need to be thoughtful <laughs> and market oriented if uh, the idea, especially spouses who may not be so excited about going, uh, if, if they you know, hear that they're gonna be eating insects there when they're really, you know, that doesn't sound palatable to them at all it might uh, hinder settlement, uh, at least to a certain percentage. And so I think we need to look at the whole picture in terms of, uh, of what we do there. Well, if we, if we rebrand, if we rebrand uh, insects as uh, scaled down 
lobsters or uh, freshwater, uh, you know, freshwater crabs, or you know, then then uh, this becomes a marketing question. Good point. Yep. So, um, well, thank everyone for attending today. I guess. Our Thanks, Thanks a lot for the talk, Bill. Um, very interesting, and you know, diet will definitely be one of the important points to cover if uh, if we're going to yeah. move to Mars. Yeah. How many how many people do we owe? I get because I guess we chased away most people who were coming. No, no, we we have a good bunch. Uh, we had a uh, fifty at one point, and there's still thirty people around. So it was a, oh, it was a good bunch. Well, yeah. we're. Yeah. we're Word to the wise, close down your other web browsers before you start speaking. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. All right, thanks a lot, Bill. Okay, you bet. Thank, thank you, sir. Bye. Bye-bye. I guess we'll hit leave.